Hello and welcome to this week's video. My name is Brianna. I am a biochem major and pre-med student at Indiana University and today we are going to compare a couple of MCAT flashcard options so that you'll know which one to choose when you start preparing for the MCAT. And I will put timestamps in the description so that you can see when we're talking about making your own Anki cards, downloading Anki cards, Blueprint MCAT, and MEM. So first let's talk about making your own flashcards using Anki specifically because I think that that's the best flashcard making tool. So the first Pro is you can make these as you're going through your content review so they can replace note taking which I think is inefficient. They'll only be added as you go through certain content so they'll be used solely as a memorization tool to complement the review that you get from reading a chapter or watching a video. And finally there will only be the information that you need to know, nothing more, nothing less because you're making them yourself. Second pro, as long as you trust the content review materials that you're using you'll be able to trust the information that's on your flashcards. Third pro, they'll be on Anki which is again my favorite favorite resource for making flashcards because it integrates space repetition for you and allows you to get through a high volume of cards every day in not very much time. And fourth and final pro, you can make these cards exactly what you want with as many visuals, diagrams, explanations as you want and you need so they'll be as helpful to you specifically as possible. I have two cons of making your own flashcards. The first of which is that it is time consuming. Even if you're replacing note taking, it takes a while to figure out exactly how you want to word things, insert the right diagrams and pictures. Doing all of that does take a bit longer than getting used to someone else's flashcard format. And that does go along with my second con, which will make it even more time consuming if you're not already familiar with Anki and with making your own flashcards, because not everyone already is comfortable making really efficient flashcards and doesn't know how to make them really high quality. And Anki specifically has a pretty big learning curve just because knowing how to do a closed deletion versus a basic card um, isn't always super intuitive. There are a lot of really good tutorials. If you're interested in getting into Anki, I would really recommend Ali Abdal's tutorials. But if you're not super comfortable with it already, I'm not sure starting MCAT prep is the best time to start learning to use Anki as well. Moving on to some downloadable Anki decks, which I picked some of them that are really popular according to Reddit, and we're gonna compare those. The first pro that I would like to mention is they are free and they are still on Anki, my favorite flashcard service. Second, the really popular ones are pretty nicely designed. It's clear that they put a lot of effort into them to make sure that they're functional, effective, and visually pleasing. So that was honestly pretty impressive. And kind of three, but really just going along with that, they usually have really helpful, like there's a portion of Anki called Back Extra where you can put additional information on the back of cards. And the information that these decks included on the backs of their cards were usually really helpful, had some really nice diagrams some really nice extra explanations so that was really great to see too. And four, they're usually broken up by topic or section of the MCAT. The BORAS deck, I don't know if I'm saying that, but that one did an especially good job of this and broke it up by specific topics so that makes it a little bit easier to integrate into your studying so that you're not just going through hundreds of flashcards right away. There's a way to turn them on by topic depending on when you want to integrate them into your review so that was really nice as well. Moving on to cons, my first one is that even with those tagged topics or sections it can be kind of hard to coordinate this with the specific content that you're reviewing especially since different review materials introduce material in different ways in different orders and might break up topics a little bit differently you can turn on the topics based on when you see them in your own review but they won't be exactly the same and could be kind of hard to line up con number two and this might just be a personal thing but i find it a little bit difficult to trust these resources that are just downloadable online I'm sure that these really popular ones that the Reddit pages really rave about are pretty reliable. Um, just for me personally, it's a little bit difficult to completely trust an online resource like that, especially with something as important to me and my future as my MCAT score. Number three is that even the largest downloadable Anki decks typically are only around 500 cards. You could take this a couple of different ways. You could see it as they're not being as comprehensive and it's not gonna actually help you memorize everything that you need to know for the MCAT. Or you could take it to mean that they're leaving out repetitive or unnecessary information in favor of more high yield concepts really just however you want to view that. Con number four could be another reason that there's only about 500 cards in these decks. 
while they do seem like pretty high quality cards in most instances, a lot of them had three to four closed deletions, which are just like fill in the blanks in Anki, and that's just too many in my opinion. You don't want a card that's so packed with information. It makes it hard to memorize each individual fact because it's asking you to associate all of them together, which isn't the most efficient form of memorization, and it's hard to get into a good pace and a good like rhythm with the cards if they're asking you that many things. Number five is that these downloadable decks are massive files sometimes. This might be another just like me thing because my laptop is ancient and doesn't have very much storage left, but it could not handle a lot of these Anki downloads. It took like hours and had to restart a lot of the time, so I don't know. If your laptop is struggling a little bit like mine is, this might be pretty hard for you to access. Next, let's talk about Blueprint MCAT. They do have my favorite content review. They're what I use to prepare for the MCAT myself, and I am a campus brand ambassador for them now, so I was expecting to absolutely love these, but I do have a few thoughts about them. So starting with the pros, as usual, they are free. They have over 1,600 cards, which is kind of crazy, so you can definitely trust that they're very comprehensive and cover everything that you'll need to memorize. Three, I do feel like I can really trust them because they're developed by our MCAT tutors who are constantly developing and adjusting our MCAT resources based on AAMC standards and their own experience being in at least the 90th percentile when taking the MCAT. Four, they come with blueprint analytics, which are really clear, really easy to use, and are already like set up for you so you can see exactly how you're doing in every topic and which topic has been kind of more difficult or less difficult for you to memorize. And along with that, they have little rewards for like completing so many flashcards of so many topics and whatnot, which is just a little thing and doesn't really matter, but does make it a little fun. I mean, who doesn't want to get little rewards for doing their daily flashcards? And finally, pro number five, there isn't really much of a learning curve for using them. They are pretty clear and easy to use from the get-go. So moving on to the cons, number one is that it can be kind of hard to align your content review with these flashcards the same way that it would be with the downloadable Anki decks. They are broken up by topic, but if you're not using Blueprint for review, this might not line up super well with your content review. So just something to keep in mind that it might not go along as memorization following review as smoothly. My second con is that they do advertise these as incorporating spaced repetition, but I think the execution of it is a little bit off compared to the spaced repetition that I really love with Anki, that you do have to tag the cards with your comfort level in them, and there is a way to tell it to stop showing you the cards that you're really comfortable with, but there isn't kind of a built-in way to set the time in between seeing each card based on your comfort level. You just kind of have to decide to review your less comfortable cards more often until they become the more comfortable cards, which is a little less helpful than the Anki system that just gives you two days if you're comfortable with a card, four if you're really comfortable with it, and so on. Con number three, not to sound like a child, but there are not enough pictures in these flashcards for me. They definitely use the structures when it's really important, like if you're memorizing amino acids, they're gonna have all the amino acid structures, but having extra pictures and diagrams to associate with the information on a card has been proven to make it more memorable, and I've seen this in the cards that I use for myself, and it does really make a big difference for me. So I would just love if they could take some of their beautiful content review videos and take maybe screenshots of those and put them with the cards just to make the information a little bit more memorable. My fourth and final con for blueprint flashcards is that they are a little bit slower to use. I really appreciate how in Anki you can just click the space bar to move to the next card, click one of the number keys to rank how difficult the card was, versus on blueprint you have to physically move your mouse to different functions. Um, I'm sure that doesn't take a lot of extra time, but it does just, in my opinion, keep me from getting into that rhythm and that flow that I can get from just using one hand to click a few keys. Lastly, I want to talk about Mem flashcards. This was developed by the Med School Insiders guy. I love his YouTube videos. This wasn't around when I was taking the MCAT and preparing, so I was kind of just excited to try it out because his content has really, really helped me improve my study techniques. So first, I would say there's a really small learning curve. Everything was super clear and super easy to figure out how to learn, and there was a really nice little tutorial that took like 30 seconds to figure it all out. Second, as you click through to the back of every card, there are visuals to go with almost every concept and little extra explanations, which I absolutely love having. Third, they do have a little content review like summary sheets before you move on to the flashcards, so these would probably be easier to integrate into whatever review material you're using. Just because of that little review, then 
memorize feature. Four, you can click through them with your mouse or with your keyboard so that they can move through them a little bit snappier. And five, I feel that it's more credible than just these free downloadable ones from online just because they are really transparent about who is on the Med School Insiders team. It's all successful doctors and med students, so I at least feel like that's pretty credible information. Moving on to the cons, the first and probably biggest one in my opinion is that it isn't free like all of the other flashcards that we reviewed today, and it's honestly kind of expensive for a flashcard resource. If you were going to use it as your sole source of prep materials, it's less expensive, but as far as flashcards go, it's pretty pricey in my opinion. The second thing that I'm putting as a con is really just to be safe because I couldn't tell from the free biology unit that I sampled and I wasn't about to pay for the entire resource just for the sake of getting this question answered and I didn't see it anywhere on their frequently asked questions page. But. It's unclear if they let you review the flashcards unit by unit after you're done with multiple units, or if they, which hopefully they do, integrate the flashcards from every unit so that you're learning it based on the spaced repetition overall as opposed to on a unit by unit basis, if that makes sense. Hopefully they pull them all together, but I'm just putting it as a con to be safe because I couldn't tell and I couldn't find the answer anywhere. My third and final con is that MEM says that it can be used supplementally just for the flashcards, or that it can be used as your entire content review and really the only resource in preparing for the MCAT, which I can see people wanting to do because it is so much more expensive than other flashcard options. The only problem is their content review pages are really just the information on the flashcards in list format. It's not really explaining or walking you through concepts, so if you have any kind of extra difficulty in really fully understanding a concept, it's not gonna help you very much. It's really mostly a memorization and just review after you really fully understood the material. Plus, there are no practice questions or practice exams, so obviously you couldn't actually use this as the extent of your MCAT prep. You would have to purchase something else on top of it. All right, those were all four of the MCAT flashcard options that I wanted to go through today. Now let's do just a really quick like speed round ranking of all of them. So if you can afford it, I would put MEM at number one. If you can't afford it or don't want to pay for it, which I personally would not pay for it, I would put making your own Anki cards at number two if you are already comfortable with Anki. I would not learn Anki as you're getting ready for the MCAT. If you both do not want to pay for MEM and are not comfortable with Anki, Blueprints flashcards were still incredible. I just like Anki so much that I wasn't willing to give it up and put Blueprint ahead of it. And in last place, I would put the downloadable Anki decks. I know some people are going to be upset about that ranking, but there is still going to be a little bit of that Anki learning curve. They don't to me seem as reliable or as comprehensive as Blueprints decks, and they also aren't customized to you like making your own Anki decks if you are comfortable with Anki, so that's the ranking that I'm deciding on. But thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you for sticking around if you made it to this point. Like and subscribe if you'd like more MCAT content from me, and I will see you in the next one.